Hi, Dave here. I'm back and I wanted to talk to you about uh, a pistol that uh, has recently come back to my attention uh, and it is uh, my revolver from Heritage. So this is one that I had bought some time ago and I had reviewed some time ago as well as taken out and shot and shown how to disassemble it. I'll go ahead and put some links up here. Um, however, uh, I really haven't taken it out shooting that much recently because of, well, obviously what's going on currently, but also the fact that where I can go shoot is a little bit different than when I originally purchased this pistol. When I originally purchased this pistol, I was able to take this to the range out well, just basically out into uh, public lands and go shooting whenever I wanted. Uh, the fact that I can't do that anymore and I have to go to a range makes it a little more difficult for me to choose this one. Uh, however, it is still one of my favorite ones, even though thinking I was a cowboy once, I ripped my hand open. Stupid move. Anyway, <laughs> uh Let's go over some of the, the features of this just to kind of re-acquaint re you with it. It is a six-shot revolver in the style of the old single-action uh, cowboy-style revolvers. Uh, this one is in 22 long rifle and 22 magnum. Now, uh, I do have the 22 magnum cylinder in there. There is a 22 long rifle cylinder. You can see there is the 22 magnum. It's pretty beefy looking compared to the 22 long rifle, which is not as beefy looking. The 22 magnum cylinder has literally 22 magnum, and I'm trying to find it. There it is. 22 magnum right here on the side. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, the features of this is your standard safety cock, which is the first cock. Then you have half cock, which allows you to turn the cylinder, still can't pull the trigger, and it allows you to load and unload through the lo loading port on the side here. And you can turn the cylinder to get to each one. If you need to extract, there is an extractor here. Uh, so that's how you load and unload it, unless you choose to swap out the cylinders. And then to fire it, you have to pull it all the way back to the full cock. Now, the trigger is very light on this when it is at full cock. Uh, it is, I would say, no more than a four-pound trigger. It is very, very light. As a result, you end up with a pretty reasonably accurate pistol. The down part about the accuracy on this pistol, or excuse me, revolver, is the sights. The sights are very minimalistic. They are in the standard of the old style single action pistol. Now, they do make one version that has the stand-up sights and adjustable sights. Well, at least they used to. I don't know if they still do. This one comes with a non-adjustable sight. It comes with a bit of a uh, notch here in the back that you're supposed to sight down. And then you have a sight blade in the front. Now, with manufacturing, these are not always manufactured the same way. So you end up with some accuracy differences between pistol or between revolvers. In this case, mine shoots a little bit off, but as long as you know your pistol or revolver, you're able to compensate for it using a, what they call a little Kentucky windage. And once you figure that out with this, it's actually pretty accurate. Um, even though it only has a three and a half inch barrel. They do make variants of this with the six or four inch, six inch, or 4.75 inch, I believe a six inch, a eight inch and then there is a 16 inch variant which <laughs> no thanks uh this is the small bore variant and fun little fact these are not legal to purchase in minnesota where i live just because of they, they have three things that make it illegal it's actually called the saturday night special law 
the law states that it has to meet a specific boiling point for the, or melting point for the metal used or materials used. Uh, the, and I'm trying to remember exactly what it is, the tensile strength of the material used must meet a specific level. I believe it's 10,000, no, it's 10,000. Mm. I can't remember exactly what it is. This definitely doesn't do it. And the material used cannot be a powder pressed material, uh, which kind of falls into the last point of the tensile strength. Uh, so that's what is considered a Saturday night special. This was, uh, I believe, enacted in the late 90s here in Minnesota. Uh, which makes federally licensed dealers unable to transfer these firearms. So this one, I, since I owned it in Arizona and purchased it in Arizona, I can legally have it. I just cannot purchase any new ones. Which brings me to, oh, um, this will be important later in the conversation. So the last point I want to make on this firearm is this revolver has something that is kind of an unusual thing for revolvers like this. It actually has a hammer block safety, which in some cases is a good thing. In some cases, it's not. If you'd like to see how this works, you flip this down. You see how the hammer moves forward. If you push it up, the hammer moves back. What this does is when the safety is on, it blocks the hammer from striking the firing pin inside. You'll see that there is a firing pin right here and the hammer block, which is this safety right here, moves and, allow, and puts a block in the way when it's engaged and moves it down when it is not engaged. So right now it is currently not engaged and the firing pin is susceptible to the hammer and now it is engaged and the firing pin will not be hit by the hammer. So this is, this is a reasonably good uh, safety for one thing in my opinion, uh, dry firing your pistol. Normally with a 22 or a, a well, any rim fire pistol, you do not want to uh, dry fire your pistol. The reason for it is the firing pin will usually strike against the frame of the pistol or revolver in this case, and it can damage either the frame or the actual firing pin. Some pistols and some, uh, and some revolvers have a compensation for this, and it's not such a big deal. In most, they do not. And it basically what it does is it causes damage. And it will cause, in some cases, the weapon to not fire properly. So in this case, because it is a hammer block safety, what it does is it stops the hammer from striking against the firing pin, stopping it from flowing forward to strike the frame or damage the firing pin. So in this, in this revolver's case, you can dry fire the revolver as long as the hammer block safety is engaged. If it is, you can, and we both know that, or I have checked all of my pistols before uh, filming, you can dry fire your pistol. If I had this safety off, that had the possibility of either damaging the frame of the revolver or the firing pin, and I would not do that. I do not do that because of those reasons. Now, there are people that will argue that it, the firing pin is stronger than the frame and that there's no danger of destroying the firing pin. Not always the case. Uh, and you're also endangering the frame of your pistol as well. So take it for what you will. It, it is your firearm. You choose to use your firearm as you choose to use it. So I'm not here to police you. Just a little word up in front. So... This came to my thoughts again and my focus again because of something that Heritage has decided to release recently. Uh, and in my opinion, it's recently, it may have been a while ago and I just wasn't paying attention, but they have released a nine shot variant. So my interest peaked because 
This is something that other firearms like Ruger and, and a few others have released, and I believe Chiapa, have released in uh, allowing you to have more rounds for a revolver, at least a 22 and 22 Magnum. Now, Heritage has a 22 and 22 Magnum 9 shot available. Uh, and my thought was, well, I wonder if I could just get a cylinder and swap it out. And in this search, I was able to find in their information on their site a, a bit of information that's pretty important. Uh, and, and the reason why I was looking to see if the cylinder was available was getting back to the not able to purchase Heritage Firearms, 22 at least, here in Minneapolis or Minnesota. You're not able to do that because it's not, it's not a legally transferable firearm. Uh, so I thought I would see if I could purchase a cylinder, just swap it out. I found the information I was looking for. And unfortunately the answer is no. The question asked was, can I use a nine shot cylinder in my six shot rough rider, which is, this is a rough rider. It is just a bird's head version. The answer is no, you cannot. Uh, and then they went and, uh, and, and filled in a little more information. Uh, the nine shot cylinder is specially built or specially made for the nine shot rough rider. They then went into a little more information on it and said it will fit. In other words, you can put it in there, but it will not work. It won't function. And then they gave a reason why, uh, the cylinder uh, the cylinder hand and the hammer are physically different between the models. So you can insert, you could, you push this pin, remove this pin here. So you could push this in while pulling this out and remove the cylinder and physically place one of the nine shot cylinders into your six shot pistol. However, when you went to pull it back and it went to cycle, it would not cycle properly and it would not fight. And then when you pulled, it would not fire properly. So I'm guessing it's something to do with the alignment of the way the hand and the foot are sitting as well as the position of the hammer to the cylinder. So that would be my impression. Uh, let me kind of, I can, might be able to get you a shot of what the hand and foot looks like in the six shot. Uh, and yes, I just disassembled this quickly off camera. Um, if you want to see how to disassemble a, uh, Rough Rider, go back and check out some of my other videos. I have one on cleaning it and that shows details on how to do it. Uh, so the hammer and foot, the foot would be down here. The hand would be back here. And then you have your hammer, which is obviously that, uh, the hammer in, I did do some, uh, inspecting of the, uh, of the, um, uh, I did do some inspecting of the, uh, new models on their website and judging between mine and theirs, there is a slight difference between the hammer. I can't tell in design what the difference is. However, I, you know, I, I did, I don't have one here to inspect. So I, there may be variances between them. Uh, the hand is what actually does the clicking noise, which is back here in the back of the firearm and the foot, which is right here, actually holds it in place. So, in short, can you get a nine shot cylinder and use it in your six shot revolver? No, no you cannot. Uh, that would be neat if they were to make something like that. I don't know if it is possible for them to make something like that just because of the way the design was. I imagine if they were to produce newer ones now, they probably could produce something like that. However, currently it's not an option. So while it saddens me that you can't do that, 
And it saddens me that I won't be able to purchase one of the nine shots because that would be nice. Uh, I do rest assured that I still have my six shot. I do enjoy shooting it very much. And, you know, there's some information for you. Hopefully somebody can uh, get one and do a review and I can at least see what it looks like firing and how well it works. But that's the information I have for you. I hope this was helpful. I hope people don't go and just purchase one thinking that it'll work and it doesn't. Uh, and if you do like this and you find this information valuable, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe this video to, this, uh, to my channel. And, um, you know, go ahead and check out my wife and mine's Twitch, uh, Jen and Dave on Twitch. And uh, this is Dave. You guys have a good day. Be safe. And we'll see you again.